What's up, everybody? I discovered a um, kind of a cool feature uh, that is available in ESXi. Um, it's actually not an ESXi like button or radio button or something like that. You you uh, I turn on or off or whatever. It's actually inside of Windows, but it's something you have to do. Uh, well, you don't have to do it. You probably have heard me talk about doing the embedded packet capture inside of like the CSR 1000V. Um, or basically capturing the data inside of a router and then exporting it to like you know a box that's running Wireshark. So there's actually another way of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to log into this particular um, this VM here. Now this VM is running inside of my ESXi environment, and uh, you can ex ignore the activation thing. I'm planning on doing that here very soon. But what I'm going to do here is instead of having to run Wireshark on the box and then exporting all you know I've got uh, 15 individual routers plus uh, four XRVs what I plan on doing instead is um, I'm planning on taking and going through the uh, setting up the network adapter on this particular host to be able to capture the data on the vSwitch happening between these routers over here so what you normally would do, right, you'd go to the router, you'd set up the embedded packet capture feature with the monitor capture, etc. And then once you've captured what you want, you'd export that via TFTP to your collection station. Well, that's all well and good and it works. However, it's very it's slow, it's tedious, and that assumes that you've placed the, um, you, you've gone through and thought out your, where you're going to be placing these routers and stuff like that. Where here, it captures everything on the vSwitch. So what you do here is you click on this guy and you go to open network and sharing. Now right now I have uh, two adapters. The two adapters that I have are, if I click on adap change adapter settings, um, if we click on the VM here itself and we go to edit settings, I'm going to have one adapter that is uh, VM network and this is going to be the 6876 MAC address. So that's, that's actually the reason why I pulled that up. So if we go in here and we pull up this guy and we click back once and we click on here and we go details 6876 so it's local area connection 2. All I'm going to do here is on the properties tab I'm going to bring this guy up I'm going to click on here I'm going to go on the TCP IP port click on properties and then um, or no is it oh configure sorry yeah, I'm going to click on the configure tab up here and then I'm going to click on Advanced. Now if you come down here to where it says Priority and VLAN, right now it says Priority and VLAN is enabled. Basically what this will end up doing is if I come in here and let's say for instance on, pull up in this case right here, let me start Wireshark. This will, I want to like have a little demo preview and I'm going to capture on local area connection too. Give that a second to load. I'm going to capture on this one. And so I'm seeing a bunch of data going back and forth. But that's the from my computer to this guy, right? Because you see a lot of 3389 and some other details going back and forth. So you see a lot of stuff going back and forth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pan this out to be ICMP, right? So right now it's not capturing any ICMP. Now if I go back over here to R1 and I do a show IP interface brief. I do a ping to 10.1.3.3. You're not going to see anything, right? Even though I'm pinging and the other side detects it, if we go to router 3 and we do a show ARP, I see router 1's MAC address, right? That works all day. Now, if we go back over here to our uh, VM, wherever it's hiding, and we go into here and we click on this guy. Well, actually, we this one. No, it's, sorry, it's this other tab. We go to properties, we click on configure, click on here, we go to disabled, click OK. It's going to bounce the network adapter. It'll bring the network adapter back up once it identifies it. So now we should be good to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here to this guy, and because we're still capturing, we're going to go back to R1, and we're going to ping again, and 
we should have ah let's capture continue without saving so now we're gonna go back over here to this guy we're gonna do that ping again and there's the pings so we went from not being able to see the data at all to being able to see everything and the benefit to this is I don't didn't have to do a um, I didn't have to go in here and do an embedded packet capture and then export it and that type of stuff. The ping showed up out of the gate. Now the benefit to this is if you have a situation where you know you're going to be going through an XR, an iOS XR V, or maybe a Nexus device that you're running uh, that you have set up or what have you, you'll be able to see all the data plane stuff because you're going to be capturing everything that's going in between and that type of stuff. It does come in handy in that regard. It's that's pretty much what I'm looking for. I want to see all the data going back and forth that's happening. And this way here, you'll be able to see like, uh, you'll be able to see Wireshark capture data for like the MPLS labels and the any of the routing adjacencies and stuff like that. So if I was to set up, uh, like for instance, if I was coming here and type in, let me exclude this out. And it's going to continue, it's continuing to, to, to capture. So if I was to go to say, um, router ISIS, um, you know, one do a net of uh, you know forty nine dot zero 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 dot zero 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 and then I was to come in here and go over to router or go type in interface gate one dot thirteen and type in IP router ISIS one and then go over here to R three and do the same thing. And then I was to go to the interface level. You're going to start seeing ISIS data going back and forth. But the funny thing about it is you'd have to actually click in here and type in ISIS. And you'll see the hellos, right? So you see the hellos going back and forth. And it's not actually going to show you the, the IP address. It's going to show you the MAC. So I come in here and I go a little bit. If I expand this out a little bit, you'll be able to see this a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, but if we look at the source, do a do a show run or show or do show interface gig 1.13 pipe pipe include BIA. It's 8561. So there, this is coming from R3, and you'll be able to see it's a hello going to router. Um, this is going to the all level uh, level one ISs, so you'll see stuff like that come into play, and it gives you that flexibility of seeing what's going on. So I like that capability because now I can see everything that's going on. So now I did this uh, test on purpose because I'm going to be running ISIS in the routers that I set up, so that benefits me to set it up that way for my labbing that I'm going to be doing. But I wanted to show you a quick way of setting up Wireshark, and again, all you're doing is on the network adapter. Uh, the one that's capturing on that vSwitch, you go to properties, configure, and then you advance and you change the VLAN and priority to be disabled so it captures everything. So again, you're capturing everything on that vSwitch. Now th this doesn't work if you are on a different box, like for instance I've got two e E6i servers that I can run on and if I'm capturing, uh, if I'm doing the uh, the configuration on one, on one ESXi host, but I'm capturing it on another, it's not going to work. So it has to be on the local vSwitch, and that's basically what I'm doing. So it's basically you're spanning everything on, the, on all VLANs, so it benefits me that way. But beyond that, guys, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Until next time, take it easy.